HIV, like all viruses, lacks the ability to reproduce on its own. In order to replicate, HIV must target and infect a host cell, such as the CD4 positive human T cell. HIV is composed of a viral core containing two identical strands of RNA associated with the enzyme reverse transcriptase and other core proteins. Surrounding the core is a viral membrane containing multiple viral glycoprotein complexes, often called spikes. Each spike is a trimer of a viral glycoprotein complex composed of a transmembrane glycoprotein, GP41, and a large surface glycoprotein, GP120. The current model of HIV fusion and cell entry requires the participation of CD4 and chemokine co-receptors situated on the surface of the cell membrane. Step 1 is termed attachment and proceeds with the binding of GP120 to the CD4 receptor. This binding process is thought to induce a conformational change in the structure of GP120. Step 2 involves the interaction of the GP120 CD4 complex with the chemokine co-receptor. The action of co-receptor binding is thought to result in further conformational changes in GP120. These changes allow GP120 to move aside, exposing GP41. The third and final step preceding HIV cell entry is called fusion and is mediated by GP41. GP41 contains two heptad repeat domains, HR2 and HR1. Current models suggest that as GP41 is released from GP120, the hydrophobic terminus of GP41 embeds itself in the cell membrane. Subsequently, the loosely structured HR2 domain begins to coil into the grooves exposed on the trimeric HR1 domain of GP41. This process has been termed HR2 zipping and acts to pull the viral and cell membranes into close proximity. In theory, this acts to destabilize the membranes, in effect punching a hole called a fusion pore in the viral and cell membranes. Ultimately, the fusion pore grows large enough to allow the HIV capsid to pass through the cell membrane and into the cytoplasm. In the United States, 42,000 people will become infected with the virus that causes AIDS. AIDS is an incurable disease that is the end result of infection by the human immunodeficiency virus, or HIV. An individual who contracts HIV may become sick quickly or can live symptom-free for years. HIV and AIDS are not one and the same. Those with AIDS are infected with HIV, but people infected with HIV do not necessarily have AIDS. A person has AIDS when their T-cell count falls below a measurement scale of 200, as opposed to the 500 to 1500 in a healthy person. An extremely low CD4 count means that a person's immune system is no longer healthy enough to fight off intruding viruses and bacteria. Signs that HIV may be turning into AIDS include extreme fatigue, rapid weight loss, persistent diarrhea, a high fever, and swollen glands in the neck, armpits, or groin. Even if a person doesn't have a low CD4 count, they are still classified as having AIDS if they contract any one of 26 opportunistic conditions. These are a group of illnesses that don't generally occur in people with functioning immune systems, but do show up in AIDS patients. Two of these are cancers. One, Kaposi sarcoma, results from a tumor in the blood vessel walls and appears as disfiguring pink or purple lesions on the skin and mouth. The other cancer, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, originates in the disease-fighting blood cells known as lymphocytes. This appears as swelling of the lymph nodes. Several opportunistic conditions that confirm an AIDS diagnosis stem from invading bacteria like tuberculosis and recurrent bacterial pneumonia. Pneumocystis carinii pneumonia is a potentially deadly inflammation of the lungs that is one of the most common infections occurring in people with HIV worldwide. Tuberculosis is the leading opportunistic infection in nations where access to medications is low. It occurs when bacteria infect the lungs and can manifest as coughing with bloody mucus. 
Sometimes an opportunistic infection can be fungal, like candidiasis. When candidiasis causes a white coating to form on the mouth, tongue, or vagina, this is called thrush. Although HIV itself is a virus, another virus can enter the body and cause an opportunistic infection. One example is cytomegalovirus, or CMV, a herpes virus that healthy adults fight easily. In people with HIV, however, the virus causes damages to the body, most notably the eyes. If untreated, CMV can lead to blindness. Other complications that lead to an AIDS diagnosis include wasting syndrome, whereby a person loses at least 10% of their body weight, and AIDS dementia complex, where nerve damage causes diminished mental functioning. These conditions and others mean that HIV has progressed to AIDS. While this is disheartening, many modern medications can keep AIDS infections from progressing indefinitely. If you have HIV, talk to your doctor about diseases that can occur following infection and the best ways to treat them.